Buongiorno a tutti, sono Fabio Rossetti di EngineSoft e vi do il benvenuto a questo webinar eh, in collaborazione con, con ANSYS eh, sul tema della sicurezza eh, funzionale e della cyber security. Eh, insieme a me ci saranno i nostri amici e collaboratori Nikhil Kelkar e Michele Palubbo che interverranno subito dopo di me, dopo questa breve introduzione. Molti di noi conoscono ANSYS già da tanto tempo, è una eh, società leader mondiale nell'ambito della simulazione numerica e molti di noi sono anche abituati a pensare ad ANSYS come una piattaforma di simulazione strutturale, fluidodinamica ed elettronica. ANSYS in realtà ha ampliato tantissimo il suo campo di intervento, i suoi investimenti e in questo eh, momento sta andando anche eh, a, ad includere delle nuove tecnologie che eh, si muovono soprattutto a livello di sistema. Nel webinar di oggi non parleremo quindi di, di simulazione eh, più tradizionale, intesa veramente nel modo più tradizionale del termine, ma andremo a un livello un pochino più, più alto e parleremo piuttosto del software system simulation e della parte in particolare di eh, safety analysis e di cyber security. ANSYS e ha acquisito e continua a sviluppare continuamente una nuova piattaforma che si chiama ANSYS Made in E e insieme a noi ci sarà eh, Nikhil Kelkar che è il eh, Global eh, Channel Manager in, eh, nel mondo. E now I switch my, uh, my speech in, uh, in English in order to introduce uh, Nikhil and uh, um, please Nikhil you can introduce yourself and start your presentation. Uh, hello everyone, good morning. Uh, my name is Nikhil Kelkar. I am the channel sales specialist for ANSYS and today we are going to talk about uh, Medini Analyze. Uh, before I start my presentation, uh, I would like to show a small video uh, regarding Medini Analyze. Uh, maybe Dennis can share the video and then we can get into the presentation. Engineers have long relied on point tools to gauge safety requirements against industry standards. But this tends to be inefficient, time-consuming, and expensive. Now, there's a solution to reduce your functional safety analysis efforts and accelerate time to market. ANSYS Medini Analyze. For functional safety analysis, engineers across multiple industries trust ANSYS Medini Analyze for analysis at the concept, system, software, hardware, and even chip levels. All of your key safety analysis methods, all in a single integrated tool. Analyze different aspects of functional safety, define solutions, and ensure compliance to ISO 26262, IEC 61508, and others. To satisfy emerging safety standards, such as SOTIF and UL 4600, ANSYS Medini Analyze identifies and addresses performance shortfalls that occur even in the absence of a system failure so that design and performance both succeed in cases that go beyond functional safety analysis. Complex electronics are also vulnerable to cyber attacks. Increased software and connectivity opens the door for hackers who gain more opportunities to infiltrate systems. ANSYS Medini Analyze addresses system level security to uncover and eliminate your weak spots so your entire electronics architecture remains impervious to outside attacks. For leading electronic systems in automotive, aerospace, rail, and many more safety-critical industries. Get ahead of the compliance curve, streamline your analysis efforts, accelerate time to market, and deliver unmatched safety and security with ANSYS Medini Analyze. So, as you saw in the short video, we were talking about uh, ANSYS Medini as a full picture regarding uh, functional safety, sort of uh, cybersecurity. Uh, when we talk about uh, multidisciplinary safe system requirements, uh, our aim is to ensure that uh, uh, we, uh, the systems are critically designed with the state of art safety methodology and they are compliant to the safety standards which are dedicated for that so to, to provide those goals uh, we require 
and increased collaboration, uh, faster innovation, uh, optimization, and, and and also the cloud uh, approach. Uh, and and in this in this format, the multidisciplinary system uh, requirement comes into a very key aspect, wherein the software and the system team would uh, would work on. Uh, functional safety uh, analysis uh, also provide uh, safety of the intended functionality, uh, do a calculation on the cybersecurity threats, uh, design uh, the modules with uh, models with uh, system engineering and providing the system definition, uh, and also finally going into the uh, safety requirements. Uh, for which there would be verification and validation, and also the uh, finally providing the safety case compilation uh, when it comes in. So this is complete scenario and a complete picture of a multidisciplinary uh, safe system. Uh, when we talk about functional safety, uh, the customers are are very much uh, uh, our customers are very much into difficult aspects where they are doing a lot of manual workload uh, using different point tools, uh, which does not provide them traceability and uh, which does not have uh, a, a proper uh, a time to develop and also it's not able to provide a solution. It becomes very time consuming. Uh, when with ANSYS Medini as a solution, uh, the pro the the solution that we provide is a model-based approach, uh, which would allow instantly to update the safety analysis after even after changing the system models. Uh, it's a one platform for all your safety methodologies uh, and uh, as per the required standards. And the result of having one uh, model approach and a one platform is the times uh, that we got the customers are able to save. Uh, on the product and also with the provided uh, good uh, guided safety management tools that we are providing as well. Uh, so the benefits that our customers are gaining uh, because of this approach is that they are able to uh, reduce up to 50% and it's just not a, a number, it's it's a defined ROI number that has been uh, given by a few many of our customers that it provides up to 50% of time saving through early identification of the, the safety needs. And also we are able to design, uh, in, in our incorporate the design flows uh, via model-based approach. Uh, eventually, the results comes across that uh, there is a lot of money saving for the customers, and their their products are up to date with the compliance standard that is required. Uh, when you talk about software engineering, so uh, you eventual result for us is to our, our customer is to provide a complex solution uh, which is complied to uh, which is respected by the embedded software and also. Uh, adhering to multiple standards can be ISO 26262 for auto for automotive or can also get into different standards like RX661, DO178C, which is the AND standards uh, for the customers. So the challenge is that if they want to do a, a, a system which requires multiple million lines of codes uh, uh, to create that uh, solution, uh, the model-based approach and the design software uh, software designing approach with an automated code generation, uh, which is a full uh, fully model-based verified, and also there is no back-to-back -back testing. Uh, uh, so that is where our uh, customers are benefiting from that because the we, they are getting to do automatic code generation using software engineering, for example, as product like Skate. So. Uh, to, today we are talking about uh, Medini, say, Medini Analyze, and uh, it comes under the ANSYS Safety Analysis for Product Collection, uh, which uh, which which is catering to uh, providing quality, safety, and reliable uh, cybersecurity analysis uh, from the system, item, software, or even the hardware level uh, up to the PCB level. So even the semiconductors can. Can, can be done uh, using the safety analysis method. So there are three different products that we provide. One is Medini Analyze, which is the which is the, the basic uh, toolkit for safety analysis methodology in one tool. Uh, there is the cybersecurity tool, which talks about the cybersecurity threats. And there is the Medini Analyze for semiconductors, which is going into the chip level uh, designing for uh, for the analysis. And, and the standards that we comply to uh, come into multiple industries, starting from ISO 26262, uh, IC61508, ARP, 
uh, and 2141 as as well. Uh, so the different functional standards, uh, safety standards that uh, ANSYS Medini is able to cater to uh, comes from the very basic generic uh, IEC 61508 standards, and then we are bifurcated into different. So if you're talking about process industries, Medini can uh, can cater to your requirements. If there are customers who are working into medical devices and have to do functional safety analysis for that, uh, IEC 6061 can be used as a standard. Or if there are customers who want to do control systems with ISO uh, 13849 uh, as the basic uh, standard, there are also the the, the the main standards like ISO 26262 for automotive and uh, aerospace as well. And even for machinery, it is ISO 31489 that we work with. Uh, when we are comparing different stand safety domains, so uh, when we talk about uh, when we talk about um, ISO. Uh, which is ISO 26262, uh, the, the naming nomenclature for, uh, for the safety analysis uh, would be mentioned as a risk graph, uh, which is HARA for ISO, but it's a similar standard, uh, similar naming for uh, ARP, which would come as under FHA. And when you go into the IC 61508 uh, standards, uh, it comes across as PHA. So there are different, uh, the, 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 and the, the analysis that you're doing are very much similar, but just de depending on the standards, the naming changes, and that is what I wanted to show across with this slide here. And we will have a much more detailed explanation from one of my colleague, uh, Michel Colombo, uh, who will talk in detail about this uh, different uh, topics there. So I, I wanted to talk about uh, an example where Medinian lies it, it can be used and uh, how the customers are benefiting. Uh, uh, and I, I want to provide an application which is an in-vehicle system application example. Uh, usually our customers uh, want to ask questions and they're asking answers. They're, they want answers for questions like, uh, are my all uh, safety analysis consistent and based on what's really implemented? So the main concern is whatever the safety analysis I'm doing, are they really consistent? Uh, and what kind of safety impact of the malfunctions uh, and failures in the system? So what is the safety impact that uh, these malfunctions are giving to my, my systems? And also going down to the chip level, so asking what is the impact of this on my semiconductors when we are doing the overall vehicle safety is considered. And also uh, the customers try to answer, uh, looking for answers which uh, is more about uh, what if the components are working as designed but the capabilities are uh, falling short under real world conditions. So this is where we talk about SOTIF and uh, it, it, it's the system is working well, but there might be some conditions where oh, there is nothing in our hand and uh, how can how can the system uh, cope up with those situations? And also how many, uh, what kind of uh, cybersecurity risk we are having right now uh, and how it is impacting to our stakeholders uh, uh, for that. So that's the, these are the questions that usually customers ask for and uh, the, our solution and our answers to that is uh, for the question about, uh, which is about, is my safety analysis consistent and based on what is really implemented? So when we talk about uh, that, the customer goal is to have different multiple methods and they are in a thorough manner and there should be a scalability and also traceability of this uh, safety analysis, which is which a point tool cannot offer. So if if your uh, if your FHE is coming from uh, another point tool, your requirements are coming from another point tool. Uh, the consistency and the scalability of such and 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 the and the and the miscalculation or uh, mal manipulation is a lot more there. So uh, the solution that we are wanting to provide is a model based approach with one platform, uh, so that all your safety methodologies come in one's proper standards and they are all aligned and whenever you are doing a changes from even in one of the one of the feature it can automatically get reflected uh, across the across the plan across the system that way it would reduce uh, a lot of time to reuse uh, so that the customers can reuse their work product and also the tool uh, guided tool safety uh, tools that we are providing for safety management uh, when we talk about what is the safety impact of malfunctions and failures in systems uh, so usually uh, our customers want to understand uh, how can they ensure uh, electronic safety 
by probably having a consistent performance and uh, over time uh, and also maintain and have a supported solution. Uh, and as I mentioned, because of the model-based approach and uh, early identification of the safety needs, our customers are, uh, are getting up to 50% of time saving uh, with a single source principle uh, and also compliant, it is complete complying to the uh, safety standards. So eventually uh, the customers are ensuring that they have uh, uh, money saved back on their side with a lot of time saving as well. So this is where our uh, malfunction uh, components uh, can be uh, uh, addressed. When you talk about a uh, semiconductor uh, in an overall system, uh, the our customer goals uh, here becomes that uh, map to map the semiconductor designs uh, to the function they are supporting within the vehicle. So it it really requires that uh, that that the semiconductor chip performs flawlessly uh, and is consistent in the vehicle performance uh, and is also providing a passenger safety that way. So. Uh, for that, uh, we are able to uh, analyze the potential failure modes uh, and verify the components, uh, which is at the chip level, and also my, mitigate the impact of the design weakness uh, on the car on a day-to-day -day safe performance methodology. Uh, that way, uh, when we are doing an integrated analysis of the semiconductor with an overall system, it gives a much more better uh, a flawless and a, a and a very consistent uh, vehicle performance for our customers uh, when it when they are doing the mapping with the semiconductor side as well. So this is where I want to address, and we would probably go into a little more more detail when uh, we we talk about the FMEDA worksheet uh, just just a bit. Uh, as I mentioned about uh, uh, real world conditions, so for example, uh, some of the sensors in the car are kind of oh, have impacted by some nature uh, uh, probably rain probably fog or probably mud on their side how can they uh, how can the components uh, work in in that situation uh, how can it mitigate this hazard uh, so that it does not have a failure uh, for an for a for an automatic vehicle or for a sensor uh, that has been uh, that is providing you the directions or uh, or, or giving the uh, with giving the right information uh, and how how it is uh, compliant to the standard uh, that is very much mature to the industry solution uh, as I mentioned about SOTEF, which is uh, we provide a solution which can provide a system identification of this this risk which is the real world risk uh, and also uh, as well as the consideration of the design limitation and allowing the customer to have to get the triggering of the conditions. Uh, also providing an efficient work on SOTIF and functional safety in a common platform. So we are providing our customers with a common platform where they can do their SOTIF analysis as well as their functional safety analysis in one platform. Uh, and this platform is also, and we are one of the leaders uh, when we talk about uh, uh, sort of applicable uh, compliant in the safety standard of ISO 26262. So that is where one of the solutions that we are providing and uh, many of our customers have started to uh, uh, to work on that and re uh, provide results out of that. Uh, and the next topic that I wanted to talk was uh, what about the cybersecurity? Today, everything is getting into a digital world. Uh, everything is connected from uh, from remotely and it's that is where it our systems are very vulnerable to cyber risk and cyber security risk uh, anybody can hack uh, in our system uh, there was a video which talked showed uh, uh, two uh, founders of uh, hackers were able to hack in an SUV in 2005-15 and were able to control the complete car uh, by sitting at their home uh, which is uh, controlling the, the steering wheel, uh, also put killing the engine at the same time. So uh, this kind of risk are very much uh, a threat, uh, very, very scary and uh, and can risk lives, many lives. 
so how can our customers uh, identify this risk and uh, probably estimate the impact and the feasibility uh, of the real world uh, with this uh, when with this impacts coming into picture and how can they uh, have a scalable assessment of the system limitations uh, and the triggering conditions that they do not get hacked uh, uh, for instance for and it can be for any any application currently everything is getting into the iot iot so iot mode and everything is connected remotely so how can uh, we avoid that risk uh, is one of the most important aspect that the customers are looking to answer uh, and ansys with uh, medini ansys security cyber security we are able to provide uh, a specific work product uh, which is been which is which will ensure transparent consistency and tra traceable uh, of, uh, solution and analysis of your cybersecurity threats uh, and also provide I, uh, early development stage to identify uh, the cybersecurity issues that the customers would face across and also uh, provide a consistent analysis and the results of reporting uh, result which would be reporting uh, 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 about these vulnerabilities and uh, and eventually provide uh, time saving for our customers to develop uh, uh, um, up to uh, uh, up to date market product for uh, which can be used and uh, which would be uh, which would not have a lot of uh, cybersecurity risk available on their side. So to analyze and study their cybersecurity risk, uh, this can be uh, Medini Analyze Cybersecurity can be used across uh, with the modern-based approach. So when we talk about uh, where uh, Medi ANSYS Medini Analyze has been applied, uh, I want to talk about few customers into different domain. We have a customer who is into ra into railways. Uh, Railmill is our customer, and they've used. Uh, uh, my Medini for uh, EN uh, 50218 SIL 4 level uh, to verify their uh, safe operations. Uh, NXP is one of our bigger customers who is deploying uh, Medini internally uh, for quantitative safety analysis. Uh, lithium Balance uh, is doing uh, using is relying on Medini Analyze for doing the battery management system uh, uh, to automate the process of certification and also ZF which is uh, which is for uh, which is doing cybersecurity risk analysis using Medini. So for these are a few of our customers that, and we have more than hundreds of customers that are using Medini Analyze across the globe. Uh, just a small example about why uh, Lithium Balance uh, were uh, using are using uh, functional safety uh, verification for BMS designs. Uh, their challenges was to uh, that to supply BMS solutions. Uh, to the world automakers and with the standard which is compliant to ISX 26262 uh, they were they were uh, leveraging uh, uh, so that they would be able to provide uh, safety verifications of their BMS designs uh, and that is where they pro uh, used uh, ANSYS Medini Analyze uh, uh, and uh, it was able to help them with uh, providing and uh, an extremely demanded, uh, demanding functional safety standard, uh, which they were able to match up uh, for the global uh, automotive market requirements, and eventually reducing a lot of cost for them. And similarly, uh, ZF uh, is expanding uh, the process to include uh, cybersecurity analysis. Uh, they recommend uh, ANSYS Medini uh, to deliver work products uh, and eventually applying. Uh, Cybersecurity analysis for their driver assistance systems, advanced driver assistance system project, which is ongoing, and that is one of the re reasons ZF is uh, is one of our partners for a cybersecurity analysis today. So my my eventual takeaways from uh, from this uh, slide uh, are that uh, with ANSYS Medini Analyze, uh, customer get our customers get end to end traceability uh, and compliance to safety standards. Uh, they are able to save up to 50% of the development time with the model-based and security uh, approach, and they are able to identify possible means of cyber attack and estimate their impact on feasibility. So uh, these are the final takeaways that I want to talk across. And if there are any questions, uh, I recommend uh, you to put it in to us in chat, or uh, we can answer it to you after uh, we do the uh, technical demonstration of the product uh, and Michel, Michel Pola, Mikhail Polembo uh, would uh, be presenting that. So over to you, Mikhail. 
so hello everyone, I'm uh, Michele Palumbo um, and I'm functional safety application engineer uh, responsible for our customer in uh, South Europe and East Europe side in different domain of application, so from the aerospace, uh, the, uh, of course the automotive. Uh, uh, so, um, I was saying uh, I work in different uh, domain of application from from the aerospace, the automotive, but um, also a few others like agriculture, uh, industry, machinery, and uh, railway. So this uh, and today, okay, well, uh, Nikhil already gave a lot of uh, uh, technical uh, information. I, I will try to 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 go a bit quicker so in this way we we could move uh, in uh, uh in directly inside the, the tool uh, i always i always uh, like to present this um, ANSI, our uh, packet of ansys digital safety solution to uh, our client uh, before to moving to medini uh, these are all model based uh, solution offered uh, by ansys uh, on the right side, of course, we have the, the tool on which the ANSYS has built this empire uh, during the, the years. So the tool for system simulation, digital twin, SPS 3D sim, sim, physics, physics simulation. On the left side, is it, we have the tool uh, like uh, for the SCADE architect, for example, for the model-based uh, design and the SCADE suite, SCADE display that are uh, dedicated to the, the um, code uh, model based software uh, solution to to automatically generate code uh, certified. Uh, this solution can talk with each other because the, since they are model based, they can exchange this um, this model. So, and this is uh, let's say another level of um, traceability that is actually required because of course you cannot uh, pretend to develop um, one complex system using one. Uh, only one application, so it's important that the various applications that you use in the uh, development are um, can talk to each, each others. Okay, Nikhil also here is really saying a lot. We have more than 300 customers around uh, the world. Uh, I, of course, I could mention the one I'm, I'm working more, and then most important, we are working inside the, uh, the Europe. Uh, of course, the group Stellantis that now, of course, PSA, PSA, and Maserati are part of um, big group, and we are collaborating a lot in this uh, harmonization for the at least for the safety for the safety part. We have uh, uh, so not only main OEM but a lot of tire one and also uh, tire two since the uh, the tool has this capability to uh, work at different uh, different level offering. Uh, different uh, solution and <clears throat> for different needs. So, uh, Medini permit you to be compliant with the state of art of the main uh, functional safety standard. So, of course, the ISO 262 26 mentioned here, but in the next one, I will mention the standard to which we, we um, uh, offer the compliance. Uh, and, but not only also cybersecurity software analysis that they are more recent, so of course we, the, there are a lot of things in, in things in face of definition. But uh, already we have a lot of requests for this um, safety analysis from our uh, client that, of course, uh, have collected a lot of trust uh, with experience in the functional safety. Of course, the number are important. They, they they are able to demonstrate that we can save time, like up to 57% of the effort. And uh, it, 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 all this collaboration help our clients to have trust. Often our customer as need to understand also how their other companies are, are working and developing uh, safety analysis or are they answering to, to new requests coming from, example, from the ISO that in some, such cases are a bit complex to be uh, interpreted. And uh, so here on the left, we see the aerospace uh, standard of sure, the RP4761 uh, is often required by our client in this in the aerospace domain. And for this, uh, uh, we have uh, in the years uh, uh, developed and improved uh, a dedicated uh, template for the, um, all the standards that are coming from the IX6158. 
the, the, the most stable one can be considered, of course, the ISO 26262, because it's one standard that uh, describes in really high detail which are the processes and how this process should be implemented by the, uh, the company that are going to develop safety critical system in automotive field. Uh, but we have template um, dedicated also for the um, uh, for the agriculture, for example, the machinery and uh, all the all the others that you are able to see here. Also, the nuclear a lot used in, in the east uh, side Europe from our our Russian colleague. Uh, in this slide, the, it's just an example. We, I'm showing you which are the methods that, that are available in Made in E to cover the ISO. And uh, uh, let's say that here, um, with this rectangular here, I'm showing uh, where Made in e can can cover the uh, the phases described by the ISO. As you can see, the concept phase and product development phase are almost completely are completely covered because we offer all the means for the item definition from the functional uh, design definition of the architecture from which you then you can perform your hazard risk analysis, uh, uh, eventually using dedicated hats up with possibility to create your guide word or to use templates that are offered also as a standard by the main um, ISO, the functional uh, safety concept phase uh, with possibility to create FMEA analysis, FTA analysis, and all the uh, methods for the product development. Um, of course, uh, for the FMEA analysis, where we have a lot of, of option, uh, like possibility to create your own library and on the top of this library to perform um, the reliability prediction analysis in order that uh, you are not obliged to to redo the analysis uh, for your hardware component that are used in different systems, but simply one time that you have defined your library and you have performed your safety analysis, you will reuse this. You will define your project template and you will reuse this uh, analysis in different uh, uh, projects. And uh, this is what some of our oldest uh, clients uh, actually are, um, are working. For example, member Daimler that was able to develop more than uh, 100 of project uh, using their own specific template. Uh, uh, FTA dependent failure analysis uh, uh, largely used uh, for um, by the also the software um, engineer and uh, for the FMEA we have a, we have at least three different presets that can be used apart the fact that it can be customized. Uh, by the user. In some cases, uh, it's possible they have some specific uh, columns or imagine that we in the ISO 2662 is very standard, but when you move uh, in another domain, so you can have a lot of differences. And here, that's the, the capability of customization of Medini are essential. So, uh, okay, this was already also, this was really mentioned by Niki, why Medini was developed. The, the idea was to solve the problem of uh, inconsistency, time consuming and complicity, uh, to have uh, all the uh, app various applications that you use in uh, development of a safety critical system aligned between each other. This is, oh, let's say, almost uh, impossible because this kind of solution, as you mentioned, a dedicated solution for FTA, another one for FMEA and requirement in and specific requirement management tool, uh, like host design, and it's almost impossible to have everything traced. So a change in your system design should be manually re-performed uh, uh, in the other um, application. And this is very high consuming and create a lot of headache for a safety engineer, apart from the fact that is the to use point, point tool solution uh, is an error, error prone approach. Uh, you have to, to be, be careful uh, that this alignment is, um, is always performed. And in many cases, since we're talking about safety analysis, you need confirmation by safety engineer, quality uh, department. Uh, and this, this can be really slow. Uh, that's why Medini came and offer a solution which you can develop all the safety analysis inside one single tool, starting from, for example, 
here I will mix a bit the nomenclature of automotive uh, and the aerospace, let's say, the two biggest uh, um, domain uh, actually. And uh, um, the fact is, like also Nick uh, said before, uh, it's true that this safety has a bit different, the metrics of calculation are different, but the main idea is the same. And so we offer uh, solutions that are uh, highly customizable in order that can be used in different domains of application. Uh, so from you can start from the controllability analysis definition, um, specify your driving situation analysis. Also in this case, that can be customized and uh, saved and used for um, other project. Uh, then after you have defined your uh, item definition and define, for example, the malfunction on the top of the function of your uh, item, you will use this inside another the risk analysis. From this, you will derive, for example, your safety goal. From the safety goal, you will ask to say the safety state, but more important, you will derive some safety requirements that automatically will take the AC level coming from your hazard. So in this way, you can define your functional and technical safety concept, of course, define, deriving the functional safety requirement from the safety goal and the technical safety requirement from uh, the functional requirement using our uh, option of uh, uh, derivation, uh, decomposition, uh, uh, using our, the specific rules defined by the ISO, um, contribution and sub-requirement uh, links. On the right side, still we have the safety validation, uh, the FME analysis, FME mostly used in aerospace, FME the mostly used for hardware um, reliability analysis in automotive field. Uh, so uh, you will uh, create your uh, worksheet to, in order that you will have your uh, well-defined single point of failure or light and fault. That is uh, your target according to the other risk analysis that you have developed and be, developed before. And then you continue performing, uh, for example, attack trees analysis used in cybersecurity field, fault tree analysis, of course, used in functional safety. The tool can be linked with the, and here can permit you to do also configuration management, change management um, inside the tool in itself or connected to with the well-known uh, solution in this field. And I will show you in the next slides, which are the main solution to, to which Medini can be integrated. Uh, depending on the failure analysis offered with some default um, checklist uh, that are, um, practically defined according to, again, to the, to the ISO. And so safety architecture and safety mechanism uh, design, uh, the safety architecture that can define a different level of uh, abstraction. So you could uh, have the, uh, the item definition, functional the, uh, safety level, technical safety level, hardware or software. And then the safety mechanism that are your collection of prevention and detection measures that can be, of course, uh, defined one time and reused in different uh, FMEDA or FMECA analysis as uh, uh, mitigation of your uh, risk. So all this can be done in one single tool, of course, in a consistent and precise manner. The advantage is because it's everything is a model-based uh, solution, system-oriented. It means that when you start using Medini, you are already developing your own model or your own model. So uh, at some point after you have developed some other analysis or FMEA or FTA, if you want to, uh, to check uh, wherever uh, uh, a specific uh, subcomponent of your uh, system architecture uh, uh, has been used in this different analysis, we just right click and you will navigate inside the model to see all the connection that uh, this component is eventually is malfunction or failure modes uh, and all the quant qualitative and quantitative analysis in, in which of them is, has been used and uh, all the other links with the rest of the architecture and uh, the connection that you can have because uh, you have really a lot of possibility for uh, the traceability. So, uh, the, of course, you will decide at the beginning how to perform this, but uh, 
um, it's really difficult to not have uh, things traced inside this um, solution. Uh, here, a uh, short list of the more technical uh, core features uh, that are, uh, let's say, uh, the most important uh, from, from according to the request that we receive from the customer. We support the compliant. Uh, we, we support the compliant with the CSML. So inside Medini, you can uh, define uh, architecture uh, for static block diagram and also functional behavioral modeling, for example, for with activity diagram. diagram. We don't support the whole CSML, but part of it, and let's say the, the part that is most relevant in functional safety domain. The state of art with the main uh, known uh, reliability analysis uh, methods uh, from the most classic one, but uh, also from such uh, that are can be considered a little bit of uh, more, more specific for the domain. For example, reliability block diagram is some of the most important reliability analysis that we added in the last period and is the mostly used in the aerospace uh, uh, domain. Uh, the reliability prediction with the failure rate headbooks, uh, from what I have seen, seen so far, all um, our clients use uh, use uh, ask to especially tier one or tier two need to uh, to have this catalog and of course Medini is offering all of them so the Siemens uh, 29500 IX62380 Fides military handbook uh, and so on of course they can uh, do um, this uh, um, analysis producing also their own uh, prediction analysis this is a bit more tricky in in face of uh, uh, assessment another important thing is the integration i think in the next slide i will I will show you the the list of the tool to which medini can be integrated like i was saying at the beginning uh, you cannot think to develop a system safety uh, critical tool uh, using one unique uh, application so you need to to have more application this is better if they can are able to talk with the, with each other so that's why Medini offer a lot of integration support support for the use and automation here uh, this is important when we say that we are able to support different domain we can do this because uh, we can permit the, our uh, customer and offer um, also application engineer from our side, but also the Medini developer help uh, us in this. Uh, can define specific project template for specific need of our customer? And like we're saying in the ISO 2622, you can imagine that this project template are really strong, stable, because the ISO is really clear in this request. Other template also in the aerospace, let's see, for the ARP4761, you can have a strong one, but already in the aerospace, the company need a lot of customization. This is when we, where we mostly support our customer. If they have some specific metrics coming from, for example, from quality department, we can help them to define it inside this template in order that they, from, a, let's say, a first period, of evaluation of, of our tool, they are able to define their own template and use in different projects. Um, the automation is also important. I, I will link this with the, also the extensible and customizable. Uh, in Medini can be extended with the usage of a scripting. Um, or we support JavaScript language and uh, OCL uh, that stand for Object Constraint Language uh, that is mostly used to, to create some validation rules and we have some default well, let's say not some we have more than 200 i think uh, rules that can be run to check the that the um, the model developed in sediment is consistent and is respecting the request um, by by the iso 
in terms, for example, in the I don't know, requirement decomposition, in the uh, requirement of location, uh, traceability, and, and so on. And the scripting in, with JavaScript instead can can be used for, for a, really a lot of uh, um, things. You can navigate, for example, this model, so you can read the property, you can set property, and you have really a large uh, number of options in this in this field in order to extend your data model. Mm. Here I'm showing a list, let's say, of the main important integration that we support. Um, let's say that now this can be considered stable because at this point it's really difficult to find customers that are requiring integration with the tools that are not uh, here. And if it happens, it means that there are not enough requests to make, let's say, our developers working on it. So let's say that all this integration we support nowadays are considered more than enough. Of course, uh, the, our world change uh, faster. And if soon we see that um, another requirement management tool will uh, be uh, used by um, all the automotive customers, of course, uh, this integration will will be will be developed here on the left side so i have the list of the main requirement management tool to which medini can be integrated jama doors classic doors next generation ptc integrity uh requif is, is the more standard supported also by less known uh requirement management tool and i say almost all this one here in the list polarion is one of the last uh cause we received a lot of requests for this uh, integration, and that's why it was delivered in our last uh, um, release. For the system uh, model, uh, um, SCADARC is in the top, that is the other uh, ANSI solution I was showing you in the first slides. IBM Rhapsody, one of the largest used enterprise um, architect. Um, also, Magic Draw, Matlab Simuling, this of course is a competitor, and there are some limitations in the usage of the model after the uh, importing. Um, important is also the support of MSR XML that I say is can be considered a sort of standard for the FMEA, the FMEA, especially in the automotive field. The the columns and uh, in in uh, an FMEA table are. Uh, pretty the same and uh, so and many tools support this uh, this format so you can export using this uh, msr xml and importing inside Medini. when you do this inside Medini, you are going to reconstruct the whole architecture used inside here so um, i would say that this kind of support could be also added here because um, you're not importing only the field cosenect, but the whole architecture of your system. For the FTA, 40 plus option is uh, supporting, and uh, all uh, most everything can be exported uh, in. Um, of course, we suggest Excel, especially when, when you talk about worksheet. But you could decide to export in Word, PDF, HT. Um, uh, HTML. Uh, we have uh, some uh, customized uh, report, so uh, some custom one, but with another extension called BERT, you can also uh, customize your export. So with one click, you could uh, export in a huge template, for example, all this um, analysis that you have developed, well organized with your logo and uh, according to a specific template it requires a bit of work but it offers a lot of possibility um i will uh, um, talk about also uh, cyber security before uh, this i want to share a bit uh, the tool um,
So here now I am loading uh, a project, one of the standards that we give uh, by default uh, in, uh, in St. Mendinim. Important to know that uh, since we, we are uh, support different domain of application, uh, first thing that we always suggest to uh, our customers to give a look to our online support page. When you do this, you will be created in a uh, Nancy's page where there are a lot of interesting uh, material. Uh, some of more, in, more interesting things um, can be found in the simple project area in which you can find, for example, specific template that are not given by default inside the tool, also to not overload the tool uh, if you don't need. But for example, if for aerospace uh, company it will be really interesting to find this best practice uh, uh, for the people, for the customer that need to develop software analysis. We have an example here, um, microcontroller. Okay, this is already there. Uh, but and this section is always updated. In fact, here I'm seeing something that I never seen this so far. Mm -hmm. Cybersecurity also uh, is really interesting. Now I have, for example, imported one of the projects inside one tool, but this area can be really um, helpful for, for, for customers. This project, uh, um, of course, uh, need to uh, help the customer to at the, at the beginning of the, the usage. Uh, in this uh, project that is the one of the oldest one, electronic steering locking, uh, so in automotive uh, field, we try to use uh, all the methods that are required by OEM, tire one, and also tire two. So it's really full, it's uh, difficult that one client, one, one only, one single customer need to perform all these analysis because usually they are divided by OEM, tier one and tier two, unless they're probably startup company. This can, can happen. And uh, uh, important is uh, that uh, when you create a new project, uh, you have a different template. As you can see here, I have some loaded in my uh, preferences of Medini. So, if I need to work in automotive, of course, and I, so first time I'm using Made in e, so I never defined my project template, I'm not receiving it by a customer, I will start the, using this best practice. And uh, on the top of this best practice has been developed this one that I'm showing you here, and we will see in detail, a bit more in detail, because I don't think we have time to explore it fully. Okay, best practice for the aerospace uh, hardware template for Taiwan that need to develop mostly hardware uh, reliability analysis on the hardware part. A uh, most complex for the ISO 26262, uh, one that is able to merge uh, and put together the, uh, the functional safety and mostly also the cyber security. Also, a generic one for the industry and like I showed before, others are available in that section I showed you, or client, the customer can define their own template and to use in next project. So in this way, and the next usage, they can automatically uh, start a project with their own template. Um, sorry if I ask a second, uh, uh, it will be ended uh, at, uh, 11.30 or 12? 12 o'clock. Okay, thank you. Uh, so for the uh, item, for, uh, as you can see here, there are some uh, checklists defined. These are coming by default. Now they are already fulfilled with the, the content. These uh, are uh, really useful because the, um, can be used by the, the customer to, to follow all the process defined by the ISO in the definition, for example, in this case of a functional safety concept. So on the left side, you will find all the tasks required. 
here okay we have there they've already been checked because this already developed uh, developed project but in the description area you can see also how to develop this uh, task inside medini and this is really for uh, um, for who approach our tool at the first time I want to also uh, highlight some uh, of most recent uh, features that have been realized and uh, for which we have seen that our customers are really um, interested and this is about the digital safety uh, manager. Uh, I, I have no time to talk uh, too much about uh, this. Now made in offer a lot of features if you to have uh, uh, to focus uh, on each of them but uh, Digital Safety Manager is uh, not just a, uh, a single feature, but it's more a package of feature. And uh, let's say the first delivery has been done in the last release of the tool, and other uh, release will come in the uh, in the next year uh, until the 2023. This is really interesting because it will permit to the Safety Manager to manage different uh, project in the safety. Um, field so uh, with possibility to for example to create inside the project uh, the the team a group of people and define the timeline that can be used, the timeline milestone that can be used then to define a complex safety plan and a part of this we have also a cockpit that is coming come as web application that can be used uh, to manage more different projects and the status of this project. You mentioned to have uh, different uh, variants uh, and uh, so the uh, safety manager can have um, a really an uh, interesting uh, um, uh, visualization of wh how what is going on in the different safety project. Um, Let's move back to our project. I show how to perform the this um, the checklist. Of course, the client, the customer, have the possibility to define their own checklist with their own columns. So, starting from this and modify according to their needs. We have um, always this structure in folder. All this folder uh, uh, came with a specific content. It means that you have some specific. Uh, um, methods available um, according to the content of each function. For example, here we can see that the item definition con um, is an item definition content. So you can define everything is required for the item definition. And for course, um, we can mention the vehicle uh, level function, supporting function, and also the malfunction um, uh, associated to them. From this, uh, my function can be used as entry in the hazard risk analysis, uh, where you have a really a lot of option here, a possibility to define your controllability analysis, your driving situation, uh, to define a library automatically of situation that can be used to fulfill automatically this um, this template. From this, you will derive the safety goal according to the easy calculation that came from the severity exposure controllability level. And let's say, let, I will move quick to the safety goal and functional safety requirement. Here, um, you have a dedicated um, a view for safety goal uh, and uh, functional safety requirement. You have possibility to visualize it in a table way or in a graphical way to have, uh, uh, let's say, a more uh, um, clear picture if the table are not um, clear enough. So you have this uh, uh, visualization here where you can, that you can easily, cust um, easily customize uh, using the palette on the right. So to add new requirement to perform, for example, a technical safety level and decomposition, and then to run uh, our rules to verify that uh, the consistency of the model. Uh, of course, you need an architecture. This architecture, like I was saying, can be exported or imported, mm, can be imported by the main known uh, design uh, tool or can be, defi be defined directly inside uh, Medini. 
Uh, the same for the safety requirement, no? I forgot to, to mention, but here we have uh, all the option uh, for the connection to the requirement management tool. And let's see that it's pretty easy. You just need to the, the, the link of the module to which you want to refer and then username and password and you will easily access to your model. Of course, if you have the privilege to do it, but this depends on your customer. Uh, this is the function safety architecture. The function safety is really important because on the top of this, you can, uh, first of all, you can um, trace uh, the new requirement that you have added, but from this function safety architecture, you can derive FMEA worksheet or FMEA worksheet. And when you do this, you, you will have everything collected inside this folder in safety analysis. For example, here we have an item function of me. It means the test has been derived from the item level. So this is really high like, um, FMEA where the potential failure effects are directly the hazard. But of course, if you go down with the architecture and you derive this analysis from architecture that are at functional level or technical safety level, of course, the, the effect of uh, this uh, FMA will be the cause of the FMA on the level, um, on the top level. Uh, here, if I do show cause effect net, uh, I can see the wall next. I think many clients are used to, uh, to are very um, familiar with this kind of visualization. So it's important to, to show that the part is a uh, huge table customizable and et cetera, we have always this visualization and cause effect net call, net call that can be customized. I try to, to, to show quickly the feature for the functional safety part, but, and now I would like to, uh, to move a bit to the cybersecurity or I will not have enough time to talk about this for the cybersecurity. Uh, I will not come back again to the tool because I have some interesting um, screenshot here uh, and I will use them. Uh, okay, so of course the, um, like I said at the beginning, the ISO 21434 uh, uh, is, is be, became uh, more stable in the December 2020. It specified the requirement for cybersecurity risk management regarding engineering for concept development and production of all the uh, system related to um, electronic embedded system, including also their component, their uh, interface. Uh, the standard is not really precise like the uh, 2622. But anyway, we are able to support this uh, process I'm highlighting here. So all the, the process required by the risk assessment methods. So the concept based and the product development. Mm, let's also say that we are requ receiving uh, many requests from our customer, especially the one that has, for which we are and received more trust, let's say, for for our support in the functional safety. Um, uh, the what what is uh, describing in the the ISO in the 21434 is an iterative process that needs to be applied on any stage in the product's life um, cycle. And uh, um, this is that the six steps, the main six steps. Uh, we can uh, identify in from the ISO and we can uh, support in Medini. So we start from the identification of the asset inside the vehicle, systems such as braking, steering, lighting, uh, GPS navigation, infotainment system. Then you have to discover the system level of the treats, uh, such for example, the interface of course are the more uh, exposed exposed uh, that uh, will be placed as the asset for which you need to, to perform your analysis. Then you have to understand the consequences uh, in the phase three of the, the some attack can be successful. And also uh, based the, of course you do this estimation based on the effort to need to, that this attack can be executed. 
So then later on, you have to define the risk of a level of uh, each treat by calculating both the likelihood of an attack and the potential consequences. And at the end, you will be able to define this Tara, let's say the, this plan to execute uh, and the plan to execute uh, the um, cybersecurity measures that have to uh, be introduced in the development of, of your system in order to mitigate the risk that you have identified. Um, yeah, here, let's uh, say more technical words. So definition of a system when we saw function components port, this will help you to establish the analysis context. Then with the help of this is not mentioned, but this is important also to have collaboration of the stakeholders because of course, if you want to uh, make everything uh, secure, uh, you can add the uh, infinite uh, mechanism, uh, secure mechanism, and everything will be highly protected. But how much this will be cost? And this is really required for all the uh, interface. This should be understood also with the help of um, stakeholders. Uh, then uh, you identify the threats, potential. Uh, that uh, these, these, these threats can be um, performed so, with uh, an attack, evaluate the, 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 this risk, and then you make this um, association uh, until to decide which are the measures that you need to introduce to mitigate this risk. And of course, this means to add security goals and new requirements inside your system. And like I was saying before, here I have some screenshot directly from the tool. Uh, from the context establishment, you you have this. This is the visualization in this, let's say in uh, like in a CML diagram, but I can visualize this um, component also as a list. And in this list, I have some specific attributes. So for example, in this case, asset to be assessed. And here I will check these boxes if if that means I need to analyze this inside my my system. Then you can define attack scenarios to, to understand which are all the uh, action that should be performed uh, to have the, to have this attack and so that this attack can lead to the treats. And then you can define the list of your um, attack. Now, uh, inside Medini, in the cybersecurity template, uh, we offer also the possibility to have to, to see the main known threats and also the main known uh, attack in order that uh, uh, the customer can also have uh, already an idea. And then, uh, when you have the defined uh, so the identifies the treats and the attack trees. You could start to have your Tara, the treat assessment and treatment, in which you link the treats, the asset and analysis, the probability values, the treatment option decide to be added, and uh, so the measures and the requirements that you re derive from from this analysis that later on should be allocated to the. Um, components of component responsible of this for example in this case the ACU ACU should be responsible of the encryption of the ignition status okay again um, the main for uh, support for cyber security uh, for sure the CML support uh, possibly to create attack trees uh, create treat analysis table and uh, to have specific security goals and security requirements uh, in both way, in table way or in the um, graphical editor. Uh, really interesting, and uh, uh, here we always receive a question from the customer. Can I link safety and security? The answer is, of course, yes, because there are, of course, two kind of different analyses. They are coming from two different ISO, but they have a lot of common points. And one of these, for example, the hazard. The hazard that I have identified in my system could be linked also to, as a consequence of the threats and uh, the attacks. 
because, for example, in this case, the steering block has been identified as an hazard, but if the, the attack is successful and someone is able to manipulate the ignition managers, it means that he can put uh, uh, an invert to invert the information of the ignition status, so with the risk to have this hazard that to have the steering blocked while you are in the um, uh, highway, for example. Uh, so for sure you can link the trees to the other, and this makes sense. Uh, you could also do the same with the, the functional safety requirement and security required, because for example, the fact that you are adding additional measure, for example, like the encryption of the ignition message can be linked to the fact that you already had a check on this ignition and the check probably is okay but it will be more secure if i have an encryption here and uh, and also because this functional safety requirement that should be and also the software engineer that will develop this uh, uh, implement this functional safety requirement should be aware that there is a, a security requirement so this information is encrypted and so it's also important to know that this can this link can be done. Here again, another example, for example, for the fault tree and act tree. In the fault tree, we show, uh, we have an event uh, that is the message corrupt that has basic event of this uh, fault tree. And uh, on the right side, we have the money, the event that consists of the manipulation of the ignition message. Of course, this event can be linked in a sort of way because at the end, what I have is a, is a corruption of a message. Um, Let's say that the cause is different, but uh, the effect uh, is the same. Uh, yeah, let's uh, say that in conclusion, combining safety and security is also um, a, um, a request coming from customer, and uh, uh, it's important uh, to know that in Medini, with modern bridge approach, capability of uh, um, customized uh, template, this uh, can be uh, easily achieved. And um, we already offer template in which functional safety and security can be used, can be developed. Uh, this is some of uh, the main uh, feature released uh, uh, in the, um, our uh, last uh, Release uh, usually made in knee uh, as to release one at the beginning of the year, uh, one in the middle of the year, and so this was in August, September. Um, and uh, really interesting, the digital safety manager I tried to show quickly before. Uh, we have seen that there is a lot of interest in this uh, part because for the safety man manager, especially because. This, let's say, a um, package of features that should be used only by them. A uh, lot of improvement also in the aerospace uh, safety, the introduction of the reliability block diagrams, uh, and also improvement of FTA, because in the aerospace, the FTA are huge and uh, they need, uh, and, they, and they have performed some improvement for this. Integration with other IT safety solutions is also interesting. Yeah. Uh, we have a dedicated tool that's called ANSYS Sherlock for, predic for prediction analysis and um, on the semiconductor parts. And the analysis now that are developed in Sherlock can be exported and be imported inside uh, Medini. And uh, cybersecurity also, new important feature, but apart this, uh, I would mention that also um, our template now offer a lot of uh, new uh, capability that, of course, I had no time to mention uh, now. Um, we could, uh, of course, discuss in another um, moment to have a specific session, probably most involving many experts that have developed this, but uh, they, we have done a lot of improvement in, in this. And some other uh, generic, uh, like Felurnate, FTA again, uh, the Polarion exchange, uh, highly required, like I said before, a possibility in endorsing exchange to switch to the baseline when you import export 
uh, requirement. Uh, okay, this is actually mentioned before by Nickel, but of course we have these three uh, strategic, technical and economical um, factors that uh, uh, I hope uh, is, is clear also after this uh, presentation. 